Well, of course, you can imagine how thrilled I am to stand here being honored in the same venue as the previous inventions that the Draper Prize has recognized. It's humbling to be a part of that. And th I want to thank all of you uh, from the National Academy of Engineering that participated in this and saw fit to award me and PEM this amazing prize. I was asked today when I was speaking to the 6th, 7th, and 8th graders what inspired me to work on directing evolution. And I thought about that question and realized it's really, the inspiration comes from so many different places. It comes from engineering, the desire to solve real human problems, and it also comes from desperation, not knowing how to do it. We didn't know how to build new biological objects. We still don't know how to build new biological objects. But if we want to have a world where technology helps us live sustainably, if we want to have a world where all our children can have a standard of living that even approximates the one that we've been lucky enough to have, then we have to look to the very best engineers and I can tell you categorically, the very best engineer is nature. Nature has built absolutely amazing biological solutions to an incredible array of difficult problems. And nature has been an inspiration to me since the beginning of my career as a biological engineer. I have been lucky to be able to study these incredibly gorgeous solutions to problems and to realize that maybe humans are not quite ready to engineer them from first principles. Now, as we know, engineers have never been required to engineer anything from first principles, so I wasn't limited to being able to sit down and design from my brain new biological objects. I just said, let's try something that works. And nature figured out how to do this about three and a half billion years ago by a process that's elegant and simple. And that engineering lesson I did learn early on, keep it elegant and keep it simple. That process is evolution. And evolution builds the most beautiful biologic, biological objects. And if you want to build new ones that are going to convert renewable resources into fuels and chemicals, or they're going to cure diseases, we need to do it by that process. And to me, it was a completely obvious thing to do, but I guess I was out there early enough that I get credit for this, for which I am very grateful, and also the inspiration I got from working uh, and talking to Pim Stemmer. So I am, once again, very grateful for this award and very grateful for the emerging fields and the excitement that comes in engineering. Before I go, I want to be sure to thank a number of my colleagues uh, who are here tonight who supported me in this endeavor when it wasn't necessarily clear that this was going to work. It's always a risky thing to try something new. Uh, but I've had wonderful colleagues and supporters at the California Institute of Technology, and I have been very grateful to have that as a place to try out new and crazy ideas. I'd like to thank my friends who have helped me through the last not-so-easy few years, and it, their support has meant a great deal to me, and some of them are here tonight. And I'd like to thank my former students and my current students, especially my former students who are willing to join an assistant professor's group and work on something so out there as directing evolution in the laboratory, some of whom are here tonight. And finally, I'd like to thank my family. My two sons, William Andrew and Joseph Inman Lang, uh, they are here tonight. My third son is serving overseas in the U.S. Army and was not able to make it. But my uh, extended family is here tonight, and I'm not going to mention all your names, but especially I'd like to mention my father, who always told me I could do anything and that I should become an engineer because I'd always have a good job. <laughs> it was very good advice. Thank you very much.